uh, George Balbona. Thank you, sir. Yeah, George. I'd like to ask why uh, I've been doing this for almost three years now. Everybody who goes to these on any side sees me here. I record everything. That's what I do. I'd like to thank Ed Reisner for getting security and saying I can't record as I've always done for the three years today. Why? Now all of a sudden I have to be credentialed media? I'm media. That means many. I'm one of the many. I'm here, I'm covering, and I'm documenting. I'm a witness. Let's start talking. All right. Barry, thanks for being here. You seem to be everywhere. Vice Chairman of HB 316, co-chair of the so-called Safe Commission, running the show at the uh, SB 403 House Governmental Affairs Committee right here in this room less than a year ago, March 13th. Uh, Congressman, please listen to what your buddy Barry Fleming had to say less than a year ago in this very room when discussing the possibility of Georgia counties having to pick up any additional costs related to new voting machines. And I quote, nothing happens that we ask them to do unless we tell them to do it or we appropriate the money and we can do either. So just because we put something here now, that won't change the fact that we can always change it later. And I've met no one around this capital, capital that doesn't think we're going to buy new voting machines. Is he looking at this room? I don't think so, okay? In fact, it's referenced strictly in the bill, so we'll take up the amendments, Chairman Setzler, Ed Setzler, as you want, but I'm sure, I'm not sure that we have to do that. He doesn't, he doesn't care. All I ask is for people to be educated. The only reason to pass this bill is either is ignorance, either because you've been misled or you'd care not to know, or corruption, it's real, or both, okay? Yes. Now, the SAFE Commission, a lot of people don't know that SAFE and that, that word there is an acronym. Let's look at it. Secure. No, it ignores all cyber experts, even the National Enquirer when it has something priceless, puts it on paper and locks it in a safe. So do all Fortune 500 companies, okay? Yep. Secure, uh, that's the first one. Accessible, yes, extremely accessible to bad actors and, and hackers, okay? Fair, certainly not. Elections, no. And this is where it gets really scary. HB 13 provides us with unconstitutional appointments, masquerading as the will of the people and fair elections, okay? There's not a person here today who can read a barcode. Why do we have to put that extra level, that superfluous level step into our votes, okay? You think, oh, barcode, I go to the store, it tells me how much something costs, no. It's never told you anything. It tells a machine what it costs. And it could tell you to change that D to an R, like that. And you cannot do any kind of, uh, you know, you can't validate, it's not verifiable. You're here talking about what the difference is between the first and the second half of that, that handout you got. You have a paper trail that the actual process of doing the, the vote is your verification. You go through and as you do it, you're marking, and you're verifying it right there in front of your eyes. You scan it optically, just like you guys do uh, with the other ones, and you put it in a lockbox. How, how is that different? It's, it's fundamentally different, because you are introducing something where shenanigans are possible and undetectable, okay? Holly Springs, you look like you're glazing over. Why don't you tell me what you handed to Brad? our new SOS at the Vendor Depot after saying Merry Christmas. He grabbed it, put it in his pocket. I have video of it. What was it? Oh, your little thing? I don't want it. Do I, Holly Springs? What's it say? Does it say something about uh, fair and accurate and verifiable votes? Let me see it. Be bold. I do agree with that. But you guys are boldly cramming this bill down our throat at a fast rate, and I don't like it. I hate the taste. And you very much, like, I have a very, very, uh, your, your average is, is incredible. Statistically impossible that you always land on the wrong side of history. How is that possible? Just take the time, listen to the experts, and do the damn right things. You're not doing it. Oh, and by the way, if you like the video, I've got a link to, to Barry saying exact words like that. Oh, the other thing that I'd just like to mention quickly, Ed Setzler, he was uh, in charge of SB 403. He said we would have numbers, a good working number, by early February. That's gone, okay? It may be plus or minus millions of dollars in a $60 million program. That's gone. But we're going to uh, have good, solid working numbers by February to do this. 
Yeah. This is less than a year ago. You guys are ha jacking up the price. You say it's 150, you know that's a lie. That's just for the hardware. That is not gonna cover training and it's not gonna cover ESS's, ESNS's fat maintenance and, uh, and upkeep contracts, which get it more into the neighborhood of four to 500 from what I hear. Do the right thing. Sir, would you be willing to take a question? I'm gonna do this for three years. I know more than you guys do, I'll guarantee it. Go. I appreciate the decorum, sir. Uh, Representative Turner. Thank you. Uh, for the record, my name is uh, Scott Turner. It's not Holly Springs. Mm -hmm. um, although Scott with one T. This Holly Springs is the uh, safest city in Georgia. I'm glad to, that I'm very not proud of it. Not for voting. Right. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry? Not for voting. There's no safe harbor <laughs> in our state for voting. And sir, I, I'm going to listen to you as, as much as you'd like. But I, uh, the You would not like to listen to me as much as I'd like. But go ahead. No, I, I don't think you, you would find that we are uh, very far I'm, apart on a lot of issues. Excuse me. Okay. I want to take chairman's privilege. Thank you, sir. Sir, if you don't mind, I'd like to just go ahead and just have a cordial dialogue. Would that mm -hmm. be fine? Thank you for your I, time. I sure would appreciate that, sir. Thank you so much. <laughs> I'd like to give it back to Representative Turner, please. Thank you. And, and just so everybody knows it's here, uh, I, I made it a mission this year to, to – uh, I have two life verses. And this, I'm going to take a moment to just as a, a – as a, um, a privilege because you called me out for giving a, a bracelet to the Secretary of State. And on that bracelet it has two verses, and the first one's Matthew six twenty six, which says, "Don't worry about your life. Look at the birds of the air. God takes care of the birds. He's going to take care of you." And the second one is Acts four twenty nine, which says, "Now, Lord, consider their threats and allow your servant to speak your word with great boldness." And I have found that those two in combination have served me well here. And so I wanted to share that with everybody I possibly could because this is my last term. So I'm sorry that that caused you to break out some sort of uh, conspiracy theory that you thought was off the chain. But now you have that bracelet. It's the same one I gave to the secretary at the, at no, the thing. And, and, and I, I hope you do wear it, and I hope it brings you inspiration. And, and I don't mind that you're boldly speaking out today. But I have to say, <clears throat> there's nothing wrong with being passionate and being a witness. And I don't know what happened to you when you walked in the door today but um, and, and I and I've heard the the stories today about people questioning trust I want to just if I could you know this this I, I was talking to my my freshman friend here today and I said two years ago I packed this snowball at the top of a hill and this is the result of that snowball that rolled down the hill this is a process we're going to hear everybody out including you and, and I'll just tell you that if you are coming at me angry, I don't want, I, my natural inclination is to say, no, I'm not going to listen to you. But I think you're making great points in there somewhere, but they have to be pulled out. So be a witness. Be the, be the recorder guy. If you ha I'm, I'm sorry that it had to be today that you had to ask me about what I gave to the secretary that day. I am, my cell phone number is published everywhere, and the people on this committee make themselves available to anybody that wants to be able, wants to talk. I've sent emails to every individual mem member of. Uh, well, Congressman you know what? My cell phone number, Senator. my cell phone number is published, and I, you didn't call me because I would have called you back, or I would have answered on the first ring. Okay. So, th let's just let's That's just be exception. courteous to each other, and, and I will there's be no look. Here's the bottom line, okay? There are going to be things in here that are going to be extraordinarily important to reestablishing trust. And I promise you, they're going to, there are people on this committee that are fighting for that. And whether they have a D or an R next to their name, they're going to fight for that. And, and that's the only thing I have to say. I just wanted to respond to that since, since you said I was glazed over. I was actually hanging on every word you're saying. Okay. Um, but, but you were so confrontational. It's called passionate. I've been doing this for a while. Well, you and know, I, I understand let, let me, that. Let me tell you the difference between today and I greatly appreciate the difference is the chairman is letting us speak for as long as we'd like. Usually we have two minutes and it's like you're screaming into the void. It's just this fascist, fascist like you guys are looking at your cell phones. We, it's not a dialogue, that's what we need. We need a dialogue. Well, and we're having it now, but this it. again, exception, not the rule. I, if you guys want to make it, you know, let's, have, let's get all these people who signed up, let's get a room and let's hash it out, let's talk. Because this is, this is just us, speaking our minds and you guys taking it and, and we don't know what you think of it bring it okay do it let's do it all right here's the difference i was a professor i taught the physics of sound 
if a tree falls in the, in the forest and there's no one there to hear it, like this, does it make a sound? It does. It does not. It does. Because it, does it still vibrates, and sound is vibration, and it no, still does. No, because uh, uh, why you need three about? things. <laughs> Let me t I was actually taught the course. Okay? You need three things. Yes, you need the vibration. That's our vote. Okay? That's our voice. You need a medium. That's these voting machines. Okay? And then you need an observer. Without that, it's noise. It's not sound. Okay? Right now, we can't hear ourselves, just like this. You can't hear ourselves. We can't validate and verify that our votes are what we said they were, what we want. So you have no idea what, what voter in, our voter intent is nullified by those barcodes and by those QR codes. Okay? That's all we're saying. And that's a big difference. And that's a huge difference. This isn't a bipartisan issue. This is the sanctity of our vote, of democracy itself. And if you guys can take that lightly, then I don't know how you sleep at night. Anyone else? Wanna? And thank you again for letting us talk. Because usually we're like, oh my God, two minutes. And you just sound like an idiot. Well, I'm almost, I can do that at I'm any rate. I'm sorry that I had to excuse myself. But, you know, I, hey, I'm nature grateful calls. that it's we right. had a lady over here that was concerned that I was sneaking out. But I could actually <laughs> yeah. sneak into the men's room. <laughs> uh, have you? Bob, you have a question? Do you have a question? No. Okay. <laughs> That's it. Thanks, guys. Uh,